Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third in a series of videos covering the different Swift UI gestures. In the first video, we covered the tap gesture and long press gesture, and in the second, the drag gesture. In this one, we'll be covering the final two, the magnification gesture and rotation gesture. And as with the previous videos, we'll use the same starter project that you can download from the link in the notes below. This version of the project has completed solutions for the first two videos. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. The magnification gesture is pretty straightforward if you've been following along in this series. It is also sometimes referred to as the zoom or pinch gesture, which is what we do to magnify something on our device. When working in the simulator or the preview, we can just hold down the option key while dragging our mouse. We're going to use the same circle here, but I want to add a magnification gesture to this circle so that I can zoom in and out to enlarge or reduce the size. Let's start by adding that magnification gesture using our gesture modifier function with the magnification gesture argument. I'll option click to bring up quick help and then click on the open in documentation link. There's some sample code as usual, but let's jump down to the topics. There's one property, minimum scale delta, which is the amount you have to pinch or expand your fingers before the gesture is successful. The init defaults that to 0 0.01, so basically immediately. Now there are three possible functions again, updating, onchanged, and onended. So we know how to use those if we've already covered those in the past. The value is the argument passed to these three functions, and we see that it is a CG float representing the amount of magnification for the magnification gesture. Now there are two ways of going about managing the magnification, and I think that the updating function makes it easier to understand. We're going to keep track of the existing or current magnification and multiply that by the changed value as it's happening. So we can create an at state variable called current magnification that will track the current magnification and maintain it between pinches. The initial value when the view loads will be a magnification of one. So we'll create that current magnification state variable with that CG float of one as the initial value. The updating function you may recall from the video on the long press gesture uses a gesture state property wrapper that we will bind to the state as it changes during the update. So let's create one called pinching magnification with an initial value of one as well. Now we can add a scale effect modifier to the image using the current magnification multiplied by whatever the scale effect is going to be, which is our pinch magnification value. So initially, we'll see that's just going to be 1 times 1, or 1, so no magnification. Now, in order to do our scaling, we can use the updating modifier that has our gesture state variable and a closure as arguments. As before, the closure has three arguments, value, state, and transaction. And as we did with the long press gesture, we'll ignore the transaction but in our closure body, we will take that changing value and assign it to the in-out state value, which in turns updates our pinch magnification, which then multiplies the current magnification to give our zoom scaling effect. If we tested this now, we would see that the zooming does work, but the gesture state variable will be resetting itself back to one when I finish the gesture. And since we do not update the current magnification, it stays at 1, and therefore the scale remains at 1. To fix this, we have to update our current magnification variable with the latest magnification value when the gesture is ended. So we can use the onEnded function to do that. Running this in the preview, we get the desired effect. Let's shorten up our code of the onEnded function a little by taking advantage of the fact that this is a trailing closure, so we can remove the outside parentheses and use $0 in place of our value argument.
Now the final gesture we'll look at in this series is the rotation gesture. And this gesture recognizes when the user touches the screen with two fingers and performs a circular motion. For this example, I've substituted the circle with a rectangle so that we'll notice a rotation. Let's add that gesture to our view using the gesture function and check out the documentation as we've done in the previous gestures. There's a minimum angle delta that we can establish before the rotation will be applied, and it's initialized at one degree, so that should be fine. And there are three familiar gesture functions, updating, onchanged, and onended, and the value that changes with the gesture is the angle itself, so this is great. To rotate a view, we can apply a rotation effect and apply an angle like this. Let's take a look at what a 45 degree angle looks like. Now in our solution, we want to remember the angle whenever we left off. So let's create a variable called current rotation and assign it the default of angle.0. The initial default will be zero degrees or zero radians. Now as we twist or circle our fingers, the rotation angle is going to change and we want to update that angle by adding on the new rotation. For this, we'll be able to use the updating function on rotation effect, and this will allow us to bind that value to a gesture state variable. We'll initialize it at zero degrees as well, and we'll call it twist angle. So our current rotation then will be the current rotation plus the twist angle, which is initialized at zero, so no rotation. So let's add in our updating function to our gesture. This should be familiar to you by now as we did this in the long press gesture and the magnification gesture. Our argument is bound to the gesture state variable twist angle, and our trailing closure has the three arguments, two of which we are interested in. Now as we rotate, we want to update the state, which is our twist angle, by the value of the rotation, which is the angle value. And then because we know that the twist angle will revert back to zero after the gesture is complete, we want to update our current rotation by adding on the last value. And we do that in the onEnded function. And then as before, we can take advantage of our trailing closure to shorten our code. Let's test that now. We can use the option on the keyboard here and preview it. And it works. My final rotation is remembered. Now to finish this off, why don't we combine a magnification gesture together with a rotation gesture? And you may recall in the first video that we can do that using the composite simultaneously function to add it onto our rotation function so that it will be recognized simultaneously. So let's just copy the two state properties from our magnification view and add them here. We'll also need the scale effect. And then before the closing parentheses of our rotation gesture, we can access the simultaneously function and then just copy and paste our magnification gesture to replace the placeholder. Let's re-indent our code and test it out. Success. We can zoom and rotate at the same time. There are more complicated composite gestures, and in the final video of this series, we'll take a look at how we can build those. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel.
You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store. And visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.